which is a truly you know, not clear, it was practical. Practical classes are very popular, but practical classes are least helpful because the speaker who speaks practical things speaks from his other point of view, and the audience they don't get benefit because it is not it is not theirs. But if they also understand the theory deeply, then they will discover their own practical tools. It is important that we understand the principles, we understand the deep. This the principle. Don't be fooled by practical things. Practical is helpful only if the theory is strong. If theory is not strong, then all the practical methods you will forget after a few days. So today we will discuss first the theoretical foundation of handling our desires. So this is based on Tetri Upanishad. Srila Prabhupada explains this in the 13th chapter of Bhagavad Gita. So Tetri Upanishad explains, who am I? Once we know who am I, then we will be able to handle ourselves, our desires, our challenges, our problems, our relationships, our wife, family, husband, home, job. Who am I? You ask any Iskand devotee immediately, he says, I am not the body, I am the soul. <laughs> But that answer is coming from where? Head. But the scriptures want us to go deeper and answer this question, who am I? The level of the heart. We have to go deeper and understand, not theoretically, not intellectually. Hmm. So the Upanishads explain that who am I? Who knows the absolute truth? Who, what is the highest? So the, the, the Upanishad says that Brahman Vidapnoti Param, one who knows Brahman, one who knows the Supreme Absolute Truth, he knows himself. The highest understanding or I, I, the soul is when the soul is in union with the highest reality, whom we know as Krishna. So the whole spiritual journey in all paths, Mayavadis, Buddhists, everywhere, they are all on a journey of moving from ignorance to knowledge, from not knowing something to knowing the highest. And we are going to undertake this journey today. And I want you to hear very attentively because this can trigger a spiritual quest in us. Unfortunately, many of us are not on a spiritual quest. We come to ISKCON not looking for Krishna. Many of us come looking for happiness, isn't it? Many of us come looking for good relationships. Many of us come looking for social support. Many of us come looking for community connection. Very few of us are looking for the absolute truth. But ISKCON is going to offer us the supreme absolute truth, Krishna. And for that, we also have to understand ourselves first. Srila Prabhupada told Tamal Krishna Maharaj, first become conscious, then become Krishna conscious. First understand ourselves. So, where is I? Where am I? Who am I? So the scriptures explain, Tetra Upanishad says, Yo Veda Nitam Gwahim Paramebhyo Namaha. To know yourself, you have to enter a cave. There are many caves. You go through this case and then inside you will find you. So you are, you are now going to embark on a journey. You are going to enter a cave now. Listen carefully. Not one cave. There are layers of five caves, which are known as Panchakosha. You enter these caves, the system of five interconnected layers. I will repeat, system of five interconnected layers. It is not that 
one is gone then the other one then the other is gone no all are interconnected all are important so if you look into yourself in a relaxed fashion if you spend some time breathing relaxing just connecting to yourself you will see that there are five layers you can feel it as i'm going to explain an example you will understand there are five layers covering you this poetically described in the upanishad there is a cave system you go through this case so are you interested to enter this case because then you will if you go through this case going through this case means being attentive it is theory but when you hear theory attentively you go to enter the caves and then you enter and finally you will find yourself but if you don't pay attention then you will not be entering the caves you will be stuck hmm? so vedanta is actually compared to lion kesari see when the lion roars what happens in the jungle all the jackals wolves they all run away right so similarly when we hear scriptures bhagavad gita ramayan upanishads all the jackals wolves of doubts insecurity everything runs away because scriptures are lion very powerful therefore don't underestimate if i don't know if we have time today but maybe tomorrow towards the end i want to discuss the importance of just coming together and hearing like this it is extremely powerful it is a lion so upanishads especially scriptures shila prabhupada is a great teacher see the scripture speciality is they are very good teachers you know who is a good teacher a good teacher will take a student from what is unknown to the known right the, the good teacher is somebody who will take you from near to far from what is to what can be poor teacher is somebody who will speak very abstract very confusing that you won't understand only like we you know poor teacher will speak word juggling like i remember before coming to iskon see i why i fell in love with iskon first day only because of the very simplicity in which they presented shila prabhupada's examples are so simple and so easy to understand that is why this is a very complicated subject but we try to make it as simple as possible but the audience the students also have to be attentive no? <laughs> but it is technical but very simple will make that is a good teacher shila prabhupad gave us many examples hmm. but i remember before coming to iskon i used to go to one spiritual organization i asked this question so uh, i used to ask questions and they used to give very technical answers so then they said when i asked more questions they said why don't you wait our guruji is going to come after two weeks so the guruji was a very big man i won't take names and create controversy here so when that guruji came everybody was the whole hall was packed and we were waiting he was supposed to come at 6 o'clock we were waiting from 5 o'clock and he came at 7:30 <laughs> after waiting for 2 and a half hours he came so i thought okay it is worth waiting for 2 and a half hours because he is going to speak something knowledge so he came in his sat on the asan and i was sitting right in the front i had waited for 2 and a half hours to hear from him and get knowledge spiritual knowledge and look at see i was a young boy i was searching for some things and i was very innocent i was really desperate for answers and with innocent faith i was looking at him waiting for him and when he came and he sat on the asan he didn't speak anything he just kept quiet closed his eyes and smiled and there was pin drop silence in the hall <laughs> and i am thinking are when will he give knowledge i have come for knowledge he didn't speak a word and then finally the hall was like this silent he opened his mouth opened his eyes and said amazing isn't it the sound of silence is amazing <laughs> did you hear i said what i didn't understand what he said then i raised my hand and everybody looked at me they felt that energy as if i am <laughs> fool i am asking questions you are not supposed to ask questions you are supposed to be in silence and i i felt that energy but still i asked i said what exactly is spirituality guruji he looked at me 
And you know what he said? This is exactly what he said. I'm changing the word a little bit, but something to this effect. He said, spirituality is being. Being is life. Life is sublime. And sublime is divinity. Divinity is the essence of being. And therefore, let us be spiritual. And everybody screamed. Wow, what an answer. And everybody clapped. I didn't understand anything. I don't know if you understood. I didn't understand. Oh, I'm feeling relieved. I thought I'm Buddha. <laughs> and everybody there was intelligent. So I thought this organization is too much for me. I cannot enter. But I came to ISKCON. I was so happy. Shula Prabhupada's example. For you are not the body, you are the soul. What example Prabhupada gave? What example, famous example Prabhupada gave for saying you are not the body, you are the soul? Car, car. car and driver. It made so much sense. The second famous example Srila Prabhupada gave. Clothes, the coat, you are throwing the saving the man and saving the coat. And third example, bird in the cage. My God, it was such a simple way Prabhupada could explain. So we are very, very fortunate. We are with the teacher who likes to simplify things. But that doesn't mean we should become lazy. When the teacher is so good, doesn't mean students should become lazy. <laughs> students should become more hardworking to understand more complicated subjects. I think faith that the teacher is trying the best. <laughs> we, are, we are such rascals, you know. Teacher is so good, but we want to be lazy and we want to be spoon-fed. No, we have to understand the difficult subjects of scriptures as a service to our teacher. So as a service to Srila Prabhupada, some of us are studying Upanishads, no? like Mundaka Upanishads, Shrishtatra Upanishad, Taitra Upanishad, because Srila Prabhupada wanted to write commentaries on this. He said, I want to write commentaries on Ramayana, Mahabharata, Upanishads. Of course, Srila Prabhupada had to leave. But Srila Prabhupada is a great teacher who wanted us to go from the unknown to the known, from far to near, from near to far. What we don't know, he wanted us to understand that. See, Srila Prabhupada's genius. I want to give one more example. When these young boys, hippies, were coming to Srila Prabhupada's class, they wanted to understand Supreme Truth, spiritual world. One boy asked, Swamiji, what is spiritual world like? At that time, the hippies, they were being drafted into the army, American army. Drafted means forced to join the army. And these young boys did not want to join the army. So there was a draft board. That board would call you and you will be put in the army. So when this boy asked, what is spiritual world like? Prabhupada said, spiritual world is a place where there are no draft boards. <laughs> All the boys like dance. They immediately connected. What was Shila Prabhupada doing? Taking them to the unknown from the known. He was taking them to the far place from the near place. Understand? Yes. Like once somebody asked, uh, what is, you know, these hippies used to take drugs. They used to take one drug called LSD. So one of the hippies asked Srila Prabhupada, what is that ecstasy we will experience of chanting Hare Krishna? Srila Prabhupada said, chanting Hare Krishna is like an ocean of LSD. <laughs> <laughs> they could immediately understand. LSD they knew. Ocean of LSD, I mean, how much ecstasy will be like <laughs> so Srila Prabhupada was a genius. He was a genius. You know, like you know, before Prabhupada, Paramatma, or how do we know Atma we call as in English? Atma is soul. Paramatma. But before Srila Prabhupada, Paramatma was not known as super soul. In the Gaudiya literature, Paramatma was known as overseer, the above Lord, Supreme Lord, like that. Srila Prabhupada, when he started writing, he saw that after 1950s in America, Superman was very popular. <laughs> so he said, Acha, man ka bada Superman. Chalo, soul ka super soul. <laughs> People can connect, no? When Srila Prabhupada came to America, the word consciousness was very popular. Amongst the young, young hippies and spiritual seekers, they used to always talk about consciousness expansion. This was a very popular, cool terms to use. 
or terms like let us alter the state of consciousness altering the state of consciousness consciousness expansion or divine consciousness these are very popular terms and shri prabhupad comes and says so our goal is to dovetail the individual consciousness to the supreme consciousness and this boys and girls said wow this is a cool swami <laughs> he knows our language <laughs> he knows what we are looking for hmm? actually shila prabha wanted to tell them love in, love krishna but he presented it in a way that they can understand hmm? and shila prabha had a simple formula he kept gulab jamuns outside the door in a box and he called those gulab jamuns as iskon bullets so the point i'm saying is just because shila prabha has made it very simple doesn't mean we become lazy we are grateful and we want to understand deeply who am i not be satisfied okay i am not the body i am the soul but just like i am not the car i am the driver no go deeper then you will be peaceful and stable otherwise despite being bhakti we have seen devotees get into depression suicide just before coming to america one of my very one of the devotees i knew very well for the last 26 years he committed suicide initiated devotee brahman initiated he was also he was one of the services was to take care of people hmm in fact he wrote me an email in the night morning i'm checking the email and reading his email and then i get a whatsapp message he is committed suicide this is not the only case so in march also one very senior mata ji in hyderabad I mentioned the name. It's not a mention. She committed suicide. Last year, another devotee from Gujarat, very senior leader, committed suicide. So why? Because we are we have studied Shri Prabhupada's philosophy very superficially. We are not going deeper. Shri Prabhupada did not simply want us to learn and memorize. Oh, I am not the body. I am the soul. I am not the body. I am the soul. No, he wanted us to experience. reality at the level of the soul shila prabhupada did not want us to have intellectual remembrance of krishna he wanted us to have an emotional remembrance of krishna you ask children you ask anyone about krishna they will tell you everything about krishna krishna has how many kinds of flute three kinds of flute what are they called what are the size of the flute how many holes each flute has they will know if you go to i don't want to take a name but i know one place where children are trained so well they know everything about krishna what at what age krishna left vrindavan to go to mathura how many years months and days old he was and you know when did he go to sandipani muni's ashram what all the details they know but we are not supposed to fall in love with krishna's bio data we have to fall in love with krishna the person so intellectual remembrance is not what shila prabhupad wanted us to have we wanted us to have an emotional connect emotional remembrance with krishna and for that emotional remembrance we need to first understand who am i and then connect at that level emotionally with krishna otherwise we become sentimental devotees or intellectual devotees hmm so tetra upanishad says okay you want to know who you are follow me i will take you through the caves i will make the most difficult subject easy to understand so first the upanishad asks who am i or basically who are you who are you i am asking you now on behalf of the upanishad who do you think you are right now answer this question if i asked you who are you what will you say imagine you are not come to iskon but you are a intelligent person intelligent human being Who has not come to his con, and you are asked this question: Who are you? What will you answer? I am an engineer. I am a Marwadi. I am a woman. I am an Indian living in America, or I am A B C D, American born, confused Desi. I met one man from Gujarat. He said uh, he is in America only, Chicago. He said, "I am A B C D E F G." I said, "What?" I said, "Prabhu, I am from Ahmedabad, but I am born in 
roots are Ahmedabad, but born in America. So everybody says they're ABCD, I say I'm ABCD, EFG. I said, what is that? American born, confused, Desi, exported from Gujarat. <laughs> <laughs> so who am I? Everybody has different answers. <laughs> uh, so anyway, so when you are asked, who am I? Who are you? You give different answers based on your psychology. If you are a feminist, you will say, I'm a woman. And if you are a male chauvinist, you go, you will say whatever, you know, everybody has their own answers. I am uh, Rajput, you know, chivalrous. Anyway, so Petro Panisha says, yes. The first answer, answer to this question, who am I is, I am what you see. What you see this? What is this? Body. I am this body. You say, are Prabhupada said, you're not the body. Yes, yes, we'll go there later. But remember, first we're entering. Remember the logic of the scriptures. Go from known to the unknown. First begin with what you can see and understand. So, congratulations. Who are you? You are this body. Because this body you can see, touch, feel, experience. See, in the olden times in India, you know, how the girl used to get married. There is, there is to be one ritual. One of the rituals in the marriage was in the night, they would make the girl look at the Arundhati star. Now that star, so many stars are there. How will you see that star? So they would make the girl see. Can you see this tree? She would say yes. Then can you see that tree? Ah, yes, yes. yes. Then can you see in between the two trees, there is this? Uh, direction, ah, yes, this direction, in between the two. And there you can see this uh, bunch of group of stars, yes, yes. Can you see on the right of that, there is this group, yes, yes. In between that, can you see this one particular star which is twinkling? Yes, that is Arundhati star. So what they have done? They have taken that girl from the known to the unknown. This is also known as Shaka Chandra Nyaya. Shaka means branch. So in between the branches, so this child doesn't know where is what is boon for the parent, but the child knows what is branch of a tree. For the parents say, can you see this branch? Yes. Can you see this branch of the tree? Yes. In between the two, can you see in the sky there is something shiny? Yes. What is that? That is Chandra. Shaka Chandra Nyaya. Seeing the moon from the branches. So similarly to understand the soul, first we have to see the body. We have to appreciate this body. This body is what I have got. So, you are the body, we will start from the body. And this body in Upanishads is called as Anna Maya. Anna means food. Maya means made up of. So, that which is pervaded by food is called as Anna Maya. So, you are eating food, you are drinking. So, that is. So, who am I? Anna Maya. I am Anna Maya. I am this body. One scientist said, who are we? The food that is rearranged, the food that is on the table, has now gone inside. We have eaten it. So who am I? The what is this body? The scientist said, it is simply food rearranged. <laughs> food, food up on the table, but it, it went inside, it got rearranged. So that is you. That is this body. So in the Vedanta, this body is known as Annam. So, and unfortunately, you all know this very well. Even if we are not come to ISKCON, most of us cannot think beyond this body. Even as devotees, we can't think beyond this body. We are always conscious of body is pain. This is happening, that is happening. Body, we are very body conscious. People look in the mirror for so long. In Mumbai, one of the housing societies, the people are complaining that the lift is very slow. <laughs> so that lift company, instead of changing the lift, they just put a big mirror inside the lift. <laughs> but then the complaint stopped. <laughs> People are busy looking at the mirror. One Italian actress, very famous actor, Sophia Loren, she was asked, what is the secret of your beauty? She said, pasta. You know, I eat pasta, so I'm beautiful. So they can't think beyond body, beyond food, <laughs> beyond this bone, flesh. So then the Upanishad says, well, so, you are this body, congratulations. But wait a minute. Are you really this body? 
This is the question the Upanishad asks. You say yes, yes. I am this body. And the Upanishad says, but uh, are you aging? Are you getting old? These are disturbing questions. You know, nobody outside world they don't ask this question. If you are talk to your office friends, death will come one day. <laughs> one day we will become old. They will think, "Hey, you are pessimistic." <laughs> they don't like all this. But if you are a student of Upanishads, see, Sheila Prabhupada what he did. You know, he digested all the Upanishads. He he understood and he prevented it in such a simple way that even a child in Iskon becomes expert in big big Vedanta. <laughs> Our children in Iskon they can speak. the essence of vedanta of the great vedanta pandits will be shocked it is not because the child is smart because our prabhupada shila prabhupada is so smart that he has made a child also expert that when children speak so wonderfully anyway so shila prabhupada how he explained to us how graphically explained to us that we are not the body you know that story narrated of bhakti vidan sarasvati thakur's famous story You know that story, liquid beauty. You know, mm, yes. Very graphic. For some other day, we'll see. <laughs> One man was in love with a girl, and he kept proposing to her. She kept refusing his advances. So finally, to teach him a lesson, she called him after two weeks or something. And then she took laxatives and she stored all the. She vomited and passed stool and all that she stored in big containers. And after 15 days, after one month, whenever he came to see her, he couldn't recognize her. He said, "Where is that girl? I love her. I want to meet her." She said, "She is there in this box." <laughs> <laughs> and he opened and ah. <laughs> so all our attraction for each other in this world, the beauty that we are attracted to, Shila Prabhupada would say, it is for this one centimeter of millimeter of skin, flesh. This the beauty that we are attracted. Just imagine. The most beautiful. Think of the most beautiful man or woman you know, of the opposite gender, and just imagine you know this most beautiful woman. She is standing next to you. You will be very excited. But imagine from her head top to the toe, this one millimeter of this skin is peeled off, and she is standing next to you. <laughs> And you are standing next to her. How will you feel? You will need a stick, big stick, to, standing next to her to drive away all the vultures, crows, which will want to feast on her body. So the beauty that we are attracted to, the body that we are attracted to, the Upanishad says is temporary. It is illusory. It is fleeting. Hmm. And it is filled with suffering. Nabad Bara Pure. This body is a city compared in the Bhagavatam to the city of nine gates or nine holes. This body has nine holes, and obnoxious substances come out of this nine holes. And this body is a source of deep embarrassment. So the Upanishad says, "You are this body, but this is what happens to your body. Are you aging? You are a child." now you become old are you the same person or are you different person you will say i am the same person if you are the same person then how can you be this body because the body has changed right one poet said i was a little boy i was a little boy and playing on the lap of my grandfather i am now sitting with my grandson on my lap you understood yes so much change has happened but i am the same one hmm? we all go through this change so the upanishad says then how are you the body the body has changed but you are the same person when we were children like the children here we used to play cricket in mumbai and when we used to play cricket the ball would go to some elderly people and spontaneously we would go to them and say uncle uncle ball de do that is how in india children address grown up people uncle they may not be your relative actual uncle but that is the culture in india namaste uncle namaste aunty uncle uncle ball de do that's how i grew up playing cricket all my life then at some point of time i joined the ashram busy doing seva i think few years ago when i was going out for some seva and children were playing cricket and the ball came to me i picked up the ball and suddenly i heard the children shout uncle uncle ball de do 
But uncle? <laughs> I became uncle. When did I become uncle? <laughs> when did I become uncle? When did this happen? Ye kya hua? Kaise hua? Kab hua? Kyo hua? Jab hua? Humne jo dekha ta, suna ta, kya batayein wo kya tha? Sapna salona tha, katham to hona tha. Hua. Ye kya hua? There's a song like that. Very deep song written by Anand Bakshi ji. So the point is, this body is changing. So John Pfeiffer, a very famous neuroscientist, he wrote in his book called The Human Brain, that every seven years, all the chemicals in the body go through change. That means if you are uh, 42 years old, that means you have gone through changes how many times? Seven, six times your body has completely changed. But if you are a 42 year old person, do you remember something that happened in your life when you were five years old? How can you remember the body is completely changed? That means something has not changed. So that means you cannot be this body. You are somebody different from this body. This is how we have to understand. Hmm? So the Upanishad asks a simple question. Do you know this body? Do we know this body? Yes, we know. Something we know, right? I can feel, I can know how the body is pain. Do you know this body? Yes. That means you are not the body. Are you getting this? Yes. Please understand this. It's a very deep, deep topics. I know this is theory, but please understand this. If you know this body, that means you are not the body. That means you are separate from it. Yes. That means body is an object. Like, do you know this watch? Yes. Do you know this bag? Yes. That means this bag is different from me. Do you know this body? Yes. That means body is an object. Are you aware of this body? Yes. Can you see the body? Yes. Can you touch the body? Yes. Can you smell the body? Yes. Can you feel it? Yes. All five senses can perceive. That means the body is Drishya. Drishya means seen, known. And who am I? I am Drishtha. I am the seer, observer. Does the body see you or you see the body? You see the body, right? I, I am looking at the hand. There is a difference between the object and the subject. So this body is a subject or object? Object. So you see the hand, right? I never get the feeling that the hand is looking at me. <laughs> it looks so weird, right? Think about it. <laughs> hand is looking at me, Prabhuji. <laughs> so I am Drishtha. Hmm? So we always think of ourselves as somebody who is conscious. You are Chetan. The body is Jada. Body is matter. Body is not you. And all of us know law of karma. Law of karma means what? So you die, you take another birth. Means all religions accept that we are not the body. Because all religions talk about life after death. Right? All religions talk about life after death. The day of judgment will all rise from the dead. So, except I think Charvak philosophy, every, every philosophy talks about that we are not the body. So, body is basically vikari, it goes through change. But I am a vikari, I don't change. Body is drishya, seen, but I am drishta. Body is an object of experience, but I am I'm the experiencer. And body is jada unconscious and I am conscious, Chetan. So therefore, Upanishad says, go beyond this cave. I am not the body. This cannot be me. I have to be different from this body. Then slowly takes us beyond the next cave. Oh, then who am I? Anyo, Antaratma, Pranamaya. The next verse says, you are Pranamaya. You are not Annamaya. Pranamaya? Look deeper. See your own body. See inside your body. You will see that there are more sukshma, more subtle things happening inside. What is there inside this body? What, what is pervaded inside? There is life. All of you experience life force. That feeling, I am alive. That life force is you. That is what the Upanishad says. Like you breathe in, breathe out. Then you breathe slowly. Just breathe slowly for five seconds. 
inhale and exhale did you hear if you are attentive you will hear the soft sound of the inhale and exhale breath that is pranamaya that is the life force so the upanishad says you are that because the body inside is pervaded by this that is called prana this life what we call in english as life force in upanishadic language it is called prana in yoga those of you know yoga we do pranayam breathing so what does prana do this inside life force what does it do anybody knows what is the breath what is that uh, life force do inside our body hmm life force what is, what is the main thing it does inside it supplies oxygen. ah yes oxygen gets assimilated in the blood because of prana life force how is the blood flowing through the veins because of the prana because of the life force you eat food how does that food get converted to energy because of the life force because of prana so much is going on inside lot of variety of biochemicals are produced in the body actually one little liver produces enough chemicals that a 500 acre factory can produce <laughs> anyway so all these life processes are surging through me inside going up and down and it maintains our body it keeps us alive and gives us experiences differences that's why prana is me so i come from udupi in our madhva sampradaya our lord hanuman ji is called as prana devaru devaru means god prana means life force he is a lord of life force so our experience of breathing that is prana anybody feels hungry that hunger experiences prana that life force our experience of health energy sickness thirst lack of energy all this is because of that life force inside this body which is called prana body is the same but prana inside is surging like a tide waves up and down i know i think many of you must have experienced those who are ayurveda or those who are little subtle you will understand that our sickness is not because so much of the body but it is because of the prana that's why in ayurveda na their medicine they don't directly influence the body they actually change the life the prana inside so this prana force is what keeps the body in action you are able to run around do things because the prana is proper life force is proper so then you will say after all this you will say yes i understood who am i i am not the body i am the prana i am the life force you may say very good i have understood now tetra prana says wait 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 go deeper if this prana changing body is changing we know that this prana also change yes what is the proof sometimes you are energetic sometimes you are tired are you always healthy that means something is constantly changing this prana is constantly changing but you are not changing you are sick now you got cured prana has changed so prana is also drishyam it is also seen experienced but you are drishta you can perceive see if you breathe na let us do this for few seconds i'll tell you what to do when i say start listen to me carefully inhale to the count of 4 hold your breath for 2 seconds and exhale to the count of 4 but not not like this not stiff not loud normal slow and that sound of the inhaling and exhaling breath try to listen to that again i'll tell you not stiff not like this you'll fall asleep but sit with grace straight you can do it yes start listen to the sound of breath thank you hari krishna you can go home and do this for a longer time 
you will see that your prana is changing and all the kachra all the negative thoughts in your head they all go out and there is balanced prana and you will feel sanatan goswami writes this in the sari bhakti suddhodaya ari bhakti vilas about the need for doing pranayam so this will cleanse our the inside of us the prana gets cleansed but the essence is prana is also changing but i am a vikari prana is vikari prana is jada but i am chetan prana is drishyam but i am drishta so i cannot be this prana maya tetre upanishad first asked you to go deeper and reveal that you are prana now the upanishad says sorry you are not prana why because prana is also an object and you are a subject that means you are beyond both anna maya and prana maya then you say then who am i the upanishad says anyo antaratma mano maya you are mano maya mano maya means you are your thoughts your emotions your feelings your personality that is you many people who are not hari krishna devotees and you ask them who, who are you go deep if you tell them go deeper don't tell me your name or caste who are you they will say i am a phlegmatic personality or you know there are personality types uh, what is that sanguine choleric all that different types of personalities are there so they say i am type 1 type 2 so we identify with our personality if we are not hari krishna devotees we identify generally with our personality that is manomaya my thoughts my emotions i am short tempered i am jovial person like that so then upanishad says yes you are that you are your personality most of educated people most educated people i know they identify themselves with their personality they will not identify themselves as brahman marwadi chi we don't believe in all this but they are stuck at manomaya they may not be at annamaya but they are stuck at manomaya actually even as devotees you know despite chanting japa for 30 years somewhere we think of ourselves in terms of my thoughts my ideas my likes my dislikes and if somebody doesn't like what i like we have differences of opinion we don't like that person ultimately we are stuck at manomaya because we we identify i am manomaya that is our state see please and please know one thing huh? i am talking all this theory next class there will be so many practical examples and you will understand your day to day life is con based on this five but if you don't if not attend it today tomorrow you will not understand anything everything will make sense to you all the case studies will make sense to you when you know the difference between annamaya pranamaya manomaya and vigyanamaya and anamaya otherwise you will not get it because how you can see your own life how your life is what all the problems are happening in your life and how you can avoid getting depressed how you can avoid getting into suicidal thoughts how you can avoid being miserable being a devotee all the answers you will get if you understand these five portions so please understand annamaya and pranamaya hope you understood yes, yes. Hmm? now manomaya is also very interesting it's all about thoughts feelings most people are uh, are stuck here so they say yes i am this personality but tetra upanishad says wait 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 not so fast you are are you really your personality because simple question because manomaya means mind personality is basically the mind right mind so the tetra upanishad says are you aware of your mind are you aware of your thoughts when you are happy are you aware can you be aware that you are happy i am unhappy prabhu ji or you only react unhappily sometimes you are angry some people are angry they just shout when i was a young boy i was very afraid of my mother but not afraid of my father. so i was very afraid of my father but not afraid of my mom because my mom when she would be angry with us she would come and beat me <laughs> predictable behavior so when she was angry she would just hit me hard but my father you know what he would do he would look at me and he would have a wry smile and very grave and he would say very softly son uh, right now i am feeling very very angry with you 
<laughs> I would get very scared because in that sentence, what is he saying actually? That I'm in control of my anger. I'm going to use it now. Any time I can use it. <laughs> that means he's aware of his anger. So some of us are angry, but that see some of us are living at the level of the mind. But if you practice a little bit or if you're a little evolved. You can be aware of your mind. That means you are not Manomaya. I don't know, maybe Saturday class. I don't know if tomorrow we'll have time. I want to give you some exercises by which you can also become aware of your mind. You can separate yourself from your mind. It will be amazing, isn't it? If you can separate, just like I am here and Prabhuji is here. Imagine you can always see your mind is here and you are here. What a victory that would be. So there are some exercises for that. But. Uh, uh, short of time, I want to explain this concept today. I will take another five minutes. So, so what I do, I uh, got this card. If somebody wants, you can take a photo and share in your WhatsApp groups. This helps me a lot to overcome the trap of Manomaya. See, many of us are trapped by Manomaya. We think I am this mind. I am this mind. So, what is this card? You know, whenever I go through any uncomfortable feeling, I immediately take this card out. This side has all the feeling words. What am I feeling right now? I'm feeling insecure. See, some word will resonate. One or two words resonates when I see this. And I see one word, okay, this is what I'm feeling. Oh, I'm feeling this. That awareness is big relief. Jai Radha Gupitana Vallabh Bhagavan Ki. Jai. Did you understand what I said just now? Yes, yes, please. But then what happens? These feelings come in us because of some needs that have been met or not met. But then I turn the page and I see the list of all the need words. So that what is my need? Oh, I, I, I need for okay, companionship, connection. I, I need connection and companionship right now. And because this need is not met, I'm feeling insecure and lonely. So you see this, but then when I come in front of Krishna, I am more clear in my prayers. I know what I'm Krishna. I need strong friendship. I need companionship. I need connection, Krishna. And because I'm not getting that, I'm feeling insecure. I'm feeling lonely, Krishna. Please help me. So I can offer my needs and feelings to Krishna and I can separate myself from my mind. So then I'm not in Manomaya trap. I'm not, I'm not living like the karmis, the non-devotees. I'm now separate. So the point is we need to separate ourselves. These needs and feelings card helps us go beyond Manomaya Kosha. Acha kosha, pancha kosha. Kosha means what you know? Sheath. Have you seen a sword? Where is the sword kept? Usko myan bolte in Hindi mein. You know, sword is kept in a sheath. It is taken out from that sheath. So the soul is covered by this sheath. That sheath is called kosha. So the soul is covered by at the topmost outer outermost covering is annamaya, then pranamaya, then manomaya. Hmm? So I want some desire. So you see, we have all have needs, feelings. So and when our identity is merged with that, then we are trapped by manomaya. But if we can separate ourselves, so then we are not the manomaya. So basically, the idea is I am not this mind. Annamaya is I am not the body. I am not the prana, I am not life force. Just like body is experienced, mind can also be experienced. You can experience your thoughts. Hmm? Mind also changes. We have 16,000 thoughts every day. <laughs> we are not these thoughts, right? Are you the thoughts or are you the one to whom these thoughts appear? You are the one to whom these thoughts appear. You have many desires, but you are not those desires. You are the one to whom those desires come. Imagine if you were those desires, then you would be bipolar, schizophrenic. <laughs> yes, right? That is how it is. When you think you are two personalities, that is bipolar. In economics, I was an economic student. So our basic foundation was human desires are infinite and the resources are finite. And that's how economics was born. Hmm. So desires are many. That means I cannot be them. I cannot be those desires. I'm different from those desires. Those desires are known, those desires are seen, those desires are felt in the personality, they are felt in the mind, 
therefore i am not the mind i am not the personality in fact the greek word persona from that the word personality has come so in the ancient greek na the they used to have drama so how they used to do dramas every actor would have a mask he would have a you would hold that mask and you would like if it's a king you would hold the king's mask and you would speak a dialogue then you would hold another mask and speak another so you would play one person would play many roles so that mask which they were holding that was called as persona so personality has come from that 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 means we you, we put up many masks that's not me so tetra upanishad says you are not your mana then who are you look deeper anyo antaratma vigyana maya you are your intelligence the sheath of intellect see mind and intelligence is same some other day other time we will discuss manas buddhi chitta ahankar all that is technical subject but to simply understand the mind and intelligence is basically separated by function see mind is basically feeling but intellect is understanding when you understand something when you say for example prabhu ji i understand what you are saying that understanding that you are getting that is you upanishad says or when you say see like that kind of certainty you have i am speaking that intellect that the uh, that that power by which you are trying to understand what prabhu ji is speaking today you are using something to understand that is you now we are going subtle thoda see we are coming closer to the real you we are entering deeper into the cave so this cannot be understood intellectually this this has to be understood see you know very important point some things na in spiritual life you are all coming to spiritual life right some things you understand by trying to understand i am not the body i am the soul i am not the car i am the driver i am not the cage i am the bird so you try to understand and you understand but there are some things where understanding comes to you understanding you can't understand understanding is just like you lost your umbrella you are searching thinking hard thinking hard that is trying to understand trying to remember then you are sitting relax after two days and suddenly you remember where the umbrella was kept so that understanding came to you so similarly i am not the body i understand i am not the prana i understand i am not the mana i understand i am not vigyana i am not that understanding i am not that intellect this you cannot understand <laughs> you have to breathe you have to relax you have to allow this to be revealed it slowly we are going deeper see as i am trying to speak as i am speaking what are i am saying see so you are trying to understand right what i am saying what are you using to understand yeah. buddhi you are using that buddhi so the that is you punishad says that buddhi that intellect is you if you say prabhu i understand your class that is vigyana maya in action or if you say i don't understand what you are saying that not understanding that awareness of not understanding understanding now are you aware of your understanding yes i get it i understood probably what you are saying or if you say i am confused that means you are aware that you are confused <laughs> that means you are uh, you are uh, beyond that understanding and not understanding that means you are not vigyanamaya kosha you are not vigyanamaya because then your intellect also becomes an object it is also drishya of course it is subtle it is very close to the real eye please understand it is is it basically na vigyanamaya is an object shining in the light of soul means it is very close to you it is you only but not you because it is also perceived by you hmm? so you have your intuition conscience all of that is vigyana man hmm? you understood so many things in school now you don't remember right that means understanding is changing forgetfulness has come uh, did you when you were in school when i was in fifth standard i didn't know what is calculus you know calculus trigonometry tan theta is equal to sin theta by cos theta you remember all this then i came to 10th standard i knew what is this and now if you ask me i don't remember so understanding was not there then i got understanding now again i lost it basically intellect is also a changing object but i am the witnessing unchanging subject 
who is witnessing my intellect i am avikari i am drishtha i am chetan i am not jada i am not vikari so please understand this intellect is also shining in the light of soul it is very close to you it is more conscious than body right obviously <laughs> mana is more con- prana is more conscious than the body but mana is more conscious than prana vigyana is more conscious than mana but still it is matter it is not you then who am i upanishad now takes you to the last cave we have few more minutes bro yes, yes, uh, yes. because this is very important i have to complete this yes. because if you get this that tomorrow whole day we'll have only case study not whole day <laughs> one hour <laughs> <laughs> i'm so excited <laughs> this is actually a 6 hour workshop slowly we do this but theek okay. so anyo antaratma anandamaya congratulations you are anandamaya you are bliss you think wow that is you that means you know sometimes you have experience deep contentment deep happiness for the openness it says you are that that experience that you had that is you have you has anyone experienced this i'll give an example sometimes you go into deep sleep and you forgot the world outside you are not even dreaming as a what i call it as uh, have you had dreamless sleep see we all have disturbed sleep nowadays people don't get proper sleep also we used to get sleep when we were children after you grow up you don't get sleep you just get tired and you you lie on the ground and then you again get up <laughs> deep sleep is experienced in childhood right yes. but sometimes you get this blank sleep i call it blank dreamless sleep you what is happening in that deep sleep there is no intellect you don't remember anything that means you are not vigyanamaya you are in that deep state of oneness deep satisfaction so you are that anandamaya there is no feeling there right you are i am sleeping you are deep you are, you are not feeling that i am sleeping right you are not feeling that i am sleeping you are just fast asleep if there is then you are not sleeping okay intellect has shut down so the upanishad says this is you and what is this called anandamaya you are anandamaya congratulations so wow i am anandamaya like when you eat chocolate ice cream uh, wrong example <laughs> is gone <laughs> eating that and that you forget everything you forgot intellect is shut down it's not intellectual that time anand you are that anandamaya congratulations so you are thinking yes now i know i have gone through all the caves and i have discovered myself i know who am i i am anandamaya topal says wait 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 not so fast why does something remain even in the deep joy which knows that you are in deep happiness okay i have a question who is that or what is that that says i slept peacefully at night i had no dream i did not know anything if people say that no probably i was so fast asleep i did not know anything so first upanishad says that is you that bliss but then the upanishad says well well you did not know anything so this not knowing is also kind of knowing no <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> means something was there something was shining something was illuminating something was alive something was there which now is able to say that oh i was completely in bliss if something was not there you know what you would have said prabhu ji i went to sleep and i got up but the fact that you know that you were in deep dreamless blank sleep means something was shining in the absence of intellect 
there is something even in deep sleep that we experienced as blankness or deep restfulness so the question is what comes up after that deep sleep and says i slept peacefully that deep restfulness is anandamaya untroubled rest which is closest to atma but it is not atma it is not you it is something that is happening to you so the happiness in kirtan have you experienced in sometimes in dancing kirtan you ecstasy you feel you are flying that is anandamaya that bliss is also experienced that you are nodding your head yes you experienced it so you are not that so who is that experiencer of bliss so basically food is annamaya life pranamaya mind personality manomaya intellect vigyanamaya and that bliss or deep sleep anandamaya and all these five are objects subtler but objects they are not you they are not subject so now you say okay fine upanishad has taught me has taken through taken me through all these caves and i understood i am not this i am not annamaya pranamaya manomaya vigyanamaya but who am i tell me who am i the tetra upanishad is at this point of time quiet nothing to say you know like our gaur gopal prabhu had gone to russia first time he brought a doll big doll you open it exactly same doll is inside and you open that doll smaller size of course then you open that there's a smaller doll same doll like that have you seen i don't know if it's a very interesting thing it looks to be a doll but you open it smaller doll then open it small same like that five layers six layers that there so like that you peel off the layers and you understand annamaya pranamaya and then finally what is there tetra upanishad is silent they won't say anything who are you who am i and we are thinking are batao hum kaun hai itna bata diya abhi batao see our problem is we are thinking soul is outside somewhere that is why we said na annamaya pranamaya manomaya vigyanamaya anandamaya sir sab nahi hai so where 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 am i who am i see the more you are searching the more you are missing it that's why shila prabhupada would end many letter articles if you read prabhupada's older articles back to order articles he would end by saying tat tvam asi this is a vedic aphorism prabhupada would many times quote he would end the article by saying tat tat means that tvam asi you are that what you are looking for where is the soul where is the soul are chodo you are that aapko samajh mein aa raha hai see we are trying to find out the real i right atma so we have negated annamaya pranamaya all the sheets and we are thinking now the real will emerge out but we can't find the tetra upanishad is quiet because that is you see vidyaranya tirtha he gives a very, very funny stupid not stupid very sweet example make this because understand this okay now okay for us simple language hand skin bones haddi all that this is annamaya right all of you clear on this yes. what you are seeing is annamaya now my hand is like this so look at me carefully you know what is, annamaya in action means you are seeing this hand hair skin whatever now pranamaya why there was some life force this life is that energy which enabled me to lift the hand from table to here so pranamaya in action right this is pranamaya now i had the thought that i should give this example to make all of you understand for so the thought that i must lift my hand after the thought i lifted the hand for so the thought is manomaya in action so the upanishad went deeper and told us that thought is you then no 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 then the feeling i am lifting the hand that is vigyanamaya the doer the kartatva usko kartatva kartatva bolte hain i am the doer and then let's say i don't know anybody a orthopedic surgeon or physiotherapist you know somebody has had a fracture after fracture after what two months his hand plaster is removed 
Then he lifts his hand. What he experiences? Bliss. <laughs> <laughs> that bliss is Ananda Maya. <laughs> <laughs> so after these five layers, okay, now soul is there. With that, and it says simple example. It says there were ten young men. They wanted to cross a river. Before crossing the river, they said, "Hey, how many of us are there? Ten of us. Let us cross the river carefully, okay? Okay, let us cross the river carefully." So they all crossed the river. They came on the other side, and they said, "Has everyone reached safely? Let me count. Let me count." He counted. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Are it? When we entered the river, we were ten. Now we are nine. The second fellow said, "No, no, no. There is a mistake. Let me count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So everybody counted. How many they counted? And they all started crying. Oh, one person has drowned. One person has drowned. We were ten of us when we entered. Now, oh, alas, alas. So one Vidyarana Tirtha Swami ji came there. Guru, Guru, that is Guru's job. Why are you all crying? Oh, we were ten and one person drowned. Now we are only nine. He said, "Okay, I'll help you. You count. Please count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then there in the third, the Guru holds his hand and points his finger towards him. Tatvam asi, you are that. Dashamas tvam asi, the tenth one is you." That is how he teaches. The second fellow then he says, "Okay, you try now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Dashamas, twamasi. So like this, all the ten people were illuminated. They were realized. So we have seen the five sheets: Anna Maya, Prana Maya, Vigya, Anna Maya. Okay, then who am I? अरे यार तुम वही है. तुम जो देख रहा है तुम वो है. So you said, 'Na, I experienced. When I asked you, did you do experience the five sheets? You said yes. That means there is an experiencer.'" If you say yes, I am an experiencer. Okay, but I want to see that experiencer. See, when you say that, you are that means you are looking for an object. You are looking. See, our mistake is we are always looking outside of us for knowledge. Always, and Prabhupada also many times said, Krishna consciousness is not foreign. It is not outside. It is within. Soul is not an object. Soul is the subject. Krishna consciousness is not foreign; it is not outside of the soul. Shila Prabhupada would give many examples for this. I don't know if you all remember this: that water is liquid, but when it comes to the material world, it gets contaminated by mud. Then we have to filter it and remove the mud, and then pure water. Rupa Goswami gives the example of a child learning to walk. He says walking is natural for the child, but we have to practice walking so that eventually that natural thing comes out. Similarly. we are naturally situated as soul but right now it is covered so uh, see what is happens now when we study scriptures this field of knowledge has two areas there is something we know and something we don't know right all of you all of you know some things in life there are some things you don't know so knowledge generally when we think of knowledge now we think of known and unknown known means the places we know the friends we know unknown means what we don't know but other than these two there is something else in the field of knowledge what is that no ar thank you i was hoping all of you will say immediately do you understand what i'm saying yes. there is known there is unknown but there is the knower that and the knower is who is apart from both known and unknown if i say prabhu ji i know the soul i don't know the soul <laughs> because if i say i know the soul that means i consider the soul as an object but the soul is a knower so now you say okay but i i i am the soul so how do i know the soul wait so to know the knower to know the soul please be with me don't get lost to know the soul to know the knower you don't need external things now we are going deeper just give yourself some time see okay i'll give a simple example to make you understand this how do you make milk sweet add sugar so that means to 
make the milk sweet you add sugar that means to know something you have to add consciousness like i don't know this microphone but if i learn about it if i add knowledge if i add my consciousness to it, then i know this so to know something we have to add consciousness that is the way things happen right but how do you make sugar sweet how do you make milk sweet how do you make sugar sweet it's a foolish question <laughs> right the shila prabhupad was walking in california he took that cane he broke that ice that clay was full of ice and the devotees were wondering what is shila prabhupad doing shila prabhupad said ice is for unnatural i am breaking the ice because water is natural state similarly when i am preaching i am breaking through the artificial covering because the natural condition of the soul is is to love krishna so krishna conscious preaching is not adding anything foreign to us it is removing the clutter so the basic idea is sugar is inherently sweet it doesn't need anything similarly i don't have to become conscious of soul i don't have to become conscious of consciousness i am consciousness i am the soul so prakasha i am illuminating everything see the soul is revealed itself in the act of illuminating everything in the act of knowing the soul is revealed so in every act of knowledge the soul is revealed see, see you don't have to see okay do you have eyes in a world that there are no mirrors let us say in this world there are no mirrors how will you prove to yourself that you have eyes see you don't have to see the eyes to realize that you have eyes right the fact that you are seeing everything outside of you means you have eyes similarly i am consciousness i am soul this is revealed in the in the fact that you are right now listening to me understanding and you are talking to me i am talking to you in this act of knowledge the soul is revealed we don't have to add consciousness to it just like you don't have to add sugar to sugar if i say if i say prabhu and mataji i want to make an announcement uh last one and a half hours i'm giving a talk but you know something i don't have a tongue <laughs> because i can't see it it's shameful to say that because the f- it's a lie right if i say i don't have a tongue it's a lie because the fact that i'm speaking means i have a tongue mm-hmm. so for like this i can go on and on i'm just concluding now the point i'm ending right now in just 2 minutes to explain this point that uh, we are not separated from this five shees basically that is our idea so it's not that okay i'm not all these shees that means i ignore all these shees no the fact that the, just like the fact that you are seeing the world means you have eyes similarly the fact that you have annamaya pranamaya manomaya vidyanamaya anandamaya is prove that you are the soul so to know yourself to take care of the soul you have to take care of this five sheets so if you take care of your so tomorrow we will discuss how to take care of annamaya pranamaya manomaya vidyanamaya anandamaya because it by today we are discussing why you have to take care of this five because if you take care of this five you are actually taking care of yourself the soul don't don't be foolish don't think okay i have to go beyond all of this and then see the soul no you are the soul who is seeing this see it is like saying in the ocean you see no waves if somebody comes and says oh look deep into that wave if you look deep into that big wave you will see water are yaar that wave you don't have to go deep anywhere that wave is itself water right similarly soul is not deep inside these five layers the soul is manifesting through these layers so if you take care of these layers if you take care of your body mind your prana you do yoga all of this means you are taking care of your soul so as devotees please my dear devotees don't ignore your health your emotions your relationships work and there are different ways we can work on all of this so 
you know you don't have to <laughs> uh, see this table if i say go you know see deep into this table then you will see wood <laughs> no this is wood right no nah, hopefully yeah it is wood <laughs> you see a clay pot clay pot drink in summer season we drink water from a clay pot you don't have to look deep into the clay pot to see clay so therefore there is no magic outside of these five sheets so you take care of this five you will be always illumined you will be always illuminated so i request you to take care of these five sheets annamaya pranamaya manomaya vigyanamaya and anandamaya tomorrow we'll spend first five minutes summarizing this and then we will discuss very interesting case studies on how devotees get trapped or not trapped they get stuck in one of these five sheets and they don't develop all the other sheets so we have to develop all the five we may not be perfect but the endeavor to balance this five would be our effective bhakti yoga otherwise we will be miserable devotees is this clear will you come tomorrow or you are too bored today by the technical class <laughs> because tomorrow is a very important class because practical will make sense only when you have understood this theory so i sincerely thank you for hearing me patiently for one and a half hours tomorrow we'll do a short class but we will get into the case study thank you very much hare krishna yes uh, so this is one book i have written called <clears throat> the inner journey just i'll take one one minute published by penguin one of the world's top publishers this book i talk about how to experience a home state in our inner world just like we have a home where you go and feel safe in our inner world also we are always struggling or we are thinking of sense gratification but there is a third place called shelter or home home state heart space so what is that heart space why to live in that heart space and how to live in that heart space how to experience shelter or belongingness inside with lot of case studies examples analogies and uh, and stories from bhagavatam chaitanya charitamrita and ashram stories which are very secret we don't share <laughs> i have written it in a book all the monastery stories of how we live in the world in the inner world just like your body right now sometimes in the temple sometimes it is in office sometimes temple sometimes at home similarly our mind is sometimes struggling sometimes enjoying but both are miserable the third house we are inviting you and that is the space where we feel shelter so how to enter that house where we feel safe shelter so i request you to take this book from kadam kanan prabhu hari krishna shila prabhu padki